Hello viewers, welcome to Biodranks. I'll be providing notes, PDF link in the description. In the previous videos, we learned something about plasmid vectors and bacteriophage vectors. So today, we are going to learn what is cosmic, sigmid, and plasmid. And it's very interesting to know that these three are formed by some modifications in plasmid and bacteriophage vectors. How? See, this cosmic vector, it's actually a plasmid, but it has a lambda phage in it. Okay. Similarly, this plasmid is actually a lambda phage, but it has a plasmid in it. Now comes phagmid vectors. So phagmid vector is also a plasmid, but it has filamentous phage. Just phage, as you can see here. So this is a combination of bacteriophage vector and plasmid vector. Okay, so we have three types, cosmid, phagmid, and plasmid. Let's learn each and every vector in detail. So let's start with cosmid. As I said, it's a plasmid in which you have a lambda phage vector of nearly 250 base pairs. This lambda phage vector has a cos site in it. Okay, so because of which it is cos mid vector. Okay, so cos site means it helps in binding ligation. It has a cohesive ends in it. Okay, so how do we get that? Let's see one by one. Okay, so this cosmic vector, it is similar to a plasmid. So it has its origin of replication here, ORI, and then it has its ampicillin resistance. It has its restriction sites like PST1, ECOR1, BAM H1, again this is also ECR1, and then you have HINT3, and then you have SAL1. Okay, so this is now a plasmid. In this plasmid, the lambda phase is inserted, and in this lambda phase, you have a cos site. Okay, so this is your cos site here. So this is cosmid. Okay, so the, uh, the cosmids can carry DNA ether three times as large as those carried by lambda itself. Okay, and the features are you have the DNA insert which is nearly 40 kilo base pairs in size and they can be packed into lambda particles Okay, and it can infect the host cells. And not only that, these vectors are amplified and maintained in the same manner like the plasmids are amplified and maintained. So it was all about cosmid vector. Let's talk about phagmid vectors now. So phagmid vectors, they are again plasmid DNA with a filamentous phage. So filamentous phage like you have N13, F1 or FT. Okay. So these uh, fragment matters, they are derived from PUC19. Okay. Plasmid University of California 19, which is approximately 2958 base pairs. Okay. Now, it has its origin of replication somewhere here. It has F1 origin of replication. Okay, and it has two strands. One is a positive strand and one is a negative strand. So it is used for several uh, other works also like sequencing. Okay, now with this, it also has its lac Z gene with its promoters. Okay, lac promoter. And then it has call E1 origin. 
and then it also has a selectable marker which is ampicillin resistance marker okay so because of all these features as you can see here it is used not only as a cloning vector but it's also used as an expression vector riboprobe vector and sequencing vector okay so this was all about fake mid vector now let's go to plasmid phas phasmid vector so when i say phasmid vector so fa fake smid plasmid fake plasmid okay that is cos that is cos side and plasmid here fake and plasmid so in this fake vector you have some genes called as non essential genes if you have watched the previous video you will be understanding what is non essential genes non essential mean genes mean genes which are not needed by the fake okay so these non essential genes are been deleted and in that place you have your plasmid in linear form okay so if you'll remember this process is called insertion lambda fake okay this is deleted and then the fake is been inserted so let me just quickly show you this is the fake vector okay i'm drawing it before to avoid any confusion these are the restriction sites okay so for more videos on restriction sites for more information on restriction sites just check out the videos in the playlist and this is your non essential region okay so first this region is deleted and once this region is deleted you have your plasmid vector here this is plasmid okay this is plasmid with its intact replication module now now remember this plasmid vector okay um, with all its um, replication module when it is inserted into a fake it is called as plasmid vector so this has its uh, dna insert is placed in the lagzet gene which is used for screening okay it can be cloned used for cdna synthesis or suitable for cloning of cdna okay and um, you can also synthesize rna copies okay now this has one particular gene called lambda gene ci so if they see this what does the ci dna gene do it represses lytic phase okay So it represses the lytic phase. Now, if this lambda gene they lack CI gene, then it will go to lytic phase. If CI gene is present, then the replication will be like plasmid replication. Okay. Now, again, if it is a mutant, mutant means it's not working now and it became temperature sensitive. So low temperature. you have your ci gene intact so that means ci gene is there it is repressing the lytic phase so you have plasmid replication if this temperature is high means ci gene is not working now it is lytic replication or lytic phase okay so this was all about plasmid vectors hope all the three vectors are clear in the next video we will be talking about artificial chromosome vectors okay so we'll be dealing about all the types of artificial chromosome vectors like bat p1 derived yeast mammalian artificial vector and human artificial chromosome okay and yeast is the most important of all this was all about today's video hope you liked it For more such interesting video, please like, share, and subscribe to Biodrunk. Let's meet in the next video. Bye bye.